So I heard the regular bake wasn't good for you. You need more resolution. You need higher quality looking textures. And so you've looked into it and you found out we offer splat matte baking. Well, you come to the right place. Let's get into it. So you'll see we are with the same uh, scene, same setup as the as the other bake one. And you, we have some erosion passes, which means attribute masks and all other masks work with this um, as basically anything that's going to be that can be used to separate your layers will be able to efficiently be used for splat back uh, splat map baking. There it is. Uh, let's get into it. Scroll down to the bake, change our uh, bake type from bake into splat map, set ourselves an output path. I'm going to use one I've already set up called Splat Maps, Prefix, Grassland. This is the resolution of your Splat Map uh, image. We're going to keep it at 4K. Uh, remember, we cannot use object because True Terrain uses geometry nodes. If you use, if your um, object uses geometry nodes to create whatever you're trying to bake out, you can probably, most likely, um, you cannot use the object. There's a pot, there's a way to do it. If you, i.e., if you don't actually create any geometry, you just deform geometry, then your UV map will still be there. But Ours is in that. We're going to head over to attribute and we conveniently go ahead and put in our terrain UVs that we export, the attribute for that. Uh, then we can continue moving on now to our splat map settings. This is where you will set uh, for each layer uh, wh what color of the splat map you want that layer to be included in. Typically, um, my, our, my assumption would be that you would want only one layer one texture per color type but you may think otherwise maybe you're combining splat maps or something i don't know notice though there is only one layer here even though up here we have four what is going on well to keep this simple and without getting super messy and super complicated and honestly i'm not even sure how we would implement it another way this only looks at the layers in the root layer so how do we get the ones that we want here in the root layer. Let's say we've, we, we've set this all up. We've got it all nice and organized, but we're like, oh, I do, I, I need to, I, I need to be able to select more than just this one. No worries. We can use the group tra traverse uh, uh, toggle to move these or traverse these, if you will, these layers into the root layer. Give it some time to think and it will put them in there. And now we have them there, all four, and you can see it showing up here. We'll go ahead and remove our group layer because we don't have no longer a need for it. And we'll scroll down here and assign each one to a color or to an option. You'll notice you have five options, which means you have a max of five layers, unless you're gonna combine splat maps in a different way. Uh, so you have five layers, five options to actually export uh, through true terrain um, and it's kind of up to you how you want to do it for this one i'm just going to go down and assign each one to the next color uh, we have here export quality levels you'll notice that that changes based upon which layer you have selected so that means you can change this so, so let's say grass is only 1k hmm i may want that as a 2k or in this rock since I, we have that i believe larger than all the other ones i probably want that exported as the 4k option now You'll note um, that this is for actually when you export the textures along with it, when this is toggled, which it is by default. And I'll show you, I'm gonna export it with and without just kind of show you the difference. Uh, but that is uh, an option there that you have if you're gonna export it and probably should be gone unless this is enabled, but maybe 4.1, 5.1 or something like that. Moving on, uh, the splat map target, uh, you can actually set, this is more uh, for bl on the Blender side of things, you actually set it to bake to a color attribute, which will then be saved on your mesh and you can and it will be exported then with your mesh, or you can pull it uh, from uh, the attribute node in the shader nodes if you want to use it all within. We're gonna set as an image texture, so our splat map will be saved as an image. Uh, uh, and if this is set to a color attribute, uh, things change. Notice there is no, uh, actually most of your settings up here are gone because there's nothing else. Instead, you have a color attribute picker down here. 
we're going to go back to it. This is also what file format, JPEG, if you wanted maybe PNG. WebP is also a good option. I know a lot of people hate it, but it is pretty high quality and it's lower cost than most of the other things. It's around the same as JPEG, depending upon what is in it, but we're gonna leave it as JPEG for now. Now notice this is still blacked out or grayed out um, and it'll tell you there it's because no layers are enabled. You don't go up here to enable layers for spot mapping that you enable them here. So we'll just enable them all because we want them all done. If you didn't want one, you could always leave it off and it won't it won't export anything with black. It'll keep it as red. Um, yeah, so we'll go ahead. Since everything is set up this way, we're going to bake out our spot map. Now this again will only bake out the spot map. It will not also export any textures, which is just a copying of the textures. And I'll show you what's going on there. So, oh, and I, I left it running there. You could see it there for a minute, but this is basic. This is what it did. Um, notice that we do, we will pop this up for you for easy access again in your chosen file explorer of choice based upon your OS. But here's your splat map. You, have, you can see that each section, it represents one of your layers and it's very nice. All right, now let's show also, notice though, if you wanted to get these textures again, you would have to go manually through the catacombs of the True Terrain file structure, which I don't recommend, uh, of your in your asset path, uh, and try to find and match the, 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 the name, which isn't always the same as it is in the, the files, as well as the quality level, and it just can be kind of complicated. That's where we have this toggle, which is on by default, because we assume you want this. What this does is it actually will export, like I said, every single texture associated with each layer. So now if we hit Bake Splat Map, again, I'm going to pull this up after I press it, I guess I should do that first. And you'll see that it's actually, you can see not only is it baking out another uh, splat map, but it will also put all of each layer uh, assigned to its color um, in a folder. So these are all, this is the, the, the whole PBR texture map that we have for grassland, dark rock, or what, what did we assign to blue? Just the rock layer, marbled rock, zero, two, one, um, in, in there. So you notice we have a B for blue, uh, BL for black, G for green, R for red. And, and so you can then assign these correctly in the, uh, and when you split this up, when you're using this flat map, and it makes it easy for you to do. Now, if you're, if you're accustomed to splat maps, you know that there is a lot more work to be done. You need to set up your scaling the same as it is in here to get this, the same results. Uh, you also, there's a, there's a decent amount of work in getting it all split out. Um, and I bet, but I will leave that to you to figure out. Well, that's all for today uh, with this one, and I will see you in the next one. Thank you. Bye.